Are you sitting tight? I'm about to give you one hell of a ride. <laughs> First of all, I will give you all new eyes. We will certainly prove that all the experts know is wrong and show that transplanting a head onto a new body is feasible in man. No less. Many years ago, a young doctor lost one of his best friends to cancer. But this was no ordinary doctor. He was a brilliant American neurosurgeon who believed that perhaps had he been able to transplant the healthy head of his friend, escape by the cancer, on a healthy donor body, he would have saved his life. In 1970, Dr. White carried out the first head body transplantation of monkeys. But the problem was that at the time, he did not have the technology to rejoin a severed spinal cord. And so left the animal paralyzed. Over the past 35 years, researchers from all around the world set out to find a cure for spinal paralysis. Despite high hopes and many promising leads, they all failed. Thus, in the expert's opinion, reconstructing the spinal cord is impossible. And so, is head transplantation. But something has happened. There's a new kid in town, Gemini. I give you the spinal cord fusion protocol, and your lives won't be again the same. According to traditional neurological lore, movements are generated in the brain where both the orchestra, the motor orchestra, and her director lie. From here, impulses are conveyed to the spinal cord through a specialized motor highway, a bundle of one million fibers, all of them necessary for movements to occur. Just like spaghetti. And for movements to occur, you really need all of them. In the spinal cord, the spaghetti come in contact with specialized cells called motor neurons. These are the cells that make you move. If this were the true story, I wouldn't be here. But the story is plenty different. I welcome you to heaven, the head and Estimosis venture. And the world will never be the same again. Spinal cord injury has nothing to do with severing a spinal cord the way we will do when we'll detach the head from the body. Spinal cord injury releases 26,000 newtons of force. This is spinal cord injury. It's unrecoverable. This is what happens in Gemini. The very sharp blade that will be used will release less than 10 newtons of force. That banana can be brought back to life, but this can. The second eye opener is that the spinal cord is no slave. The whole motor orchestra 
the whole array of motor programs that make you move is found in the spinal cord. The brain is merely a director, and we all know that an orchestra can still play without a director, albeit perhaps less perfectly, depending on the director. How do we know? Well, if we stimulate electrically with the spinal cord stimulator, the spinal cord below the level of injury, we can make paraplegic patients stand up, move their legs, and take steps. Ah, this is huge. Electricity, just like in the Frankenstein novel. The third eye-opener is that we don't need all these million fibers for movements to occur. We just need 10, 20 percent. How do we know? Easy. Back in the 50s, neurosurgeons, in their quest to find a cure for Parkinson's disease, severed this bundle of spaghetti, Motor Highway 1, and after an initial paralysis, patients recovered their movements in full. With just 10, 20 percent of all the spaghetti, of all these fibers, spared. The fourth eye opener is that discovered in the first half of the 20th century and then long ignored by the experts lies a second motor highway, a pillar spanning the whole length of the spinal cord a meshwork of closely packed cells joined by short-range fibers. And when you sever the spinal cord, you sever the short-range fibers. But neurons, as they are called, are known to regenerate their extensions. And in Motor Highway 2, the regeneration is over a very short distance. So, it takes a short time for Motor Highway 2 to be re-established, back in business. But, we still have the spinal cord stimulator. And spinal cord stimulation, electrical stimulation, has the power to accelerate the regrowth process of these short-range fibers. If we sever the spaghetti, all of them, but spare the core of the spinal cord. We can get tetraplegic patients to recover the movements over month and in full.